everybody, I hope you're having a great day. I thought it was supposed to be sunny today, but someone says it's going to rain for a little while. But you know, in spite of that, we're okay. This coming week, we've been dealing with the word fear. And today, we're going to be looking at some more signals that we can look at that will help us deal with fear. But I want to remind you about this coming Sunday at 10 a.m., we're going to do a drive-in church. This will be our third week of doing this. And our goal is to inch us back into this church as soon as possible. All kind of new rules and regulations are coming out. And we're trying our very best to do that so we can finally get back into the worship center and have church together and praise the Lord. But while we wait, we're going to continue doing what God's called us. And we're going to be outside at 10 a.m. Come bring a chair, sit outside, wave at your friends. We've still got to do the social distancing thing. So I want to encourage you about that today. So today I want to remind you, what is fear? Well, Webster says it this way, a distressing emotion aroused by impending pain, danger, evil, such as this. Uh, today I want to share with you this way, fear makes you listen to outside influences. Have you ever listened to someone who's not in the circle of your friends? It happens all the time. We meet people and we don't really know them and they begin to influence us by the decisions they make. If you watch television or social media, we constantly every day have the same debate over and over and over about how long that this is going to happen and what we're to do. And what happens because of that, we get so engulfed in television and social media, it affects and causes us to fear. So I want to give you a piece of advice today. Turn your TV off and not listen to all that. And what happens is, is that when we do this, we talk about it all the time. What I want to encourage you about fear is do what we said on Monday. Pray and worship the Lord. That is very important. Now let me remind you, fear is Satan's spiritual weapon. Our God is a God of not fear. Satan wants you to fear. It is the spiritual force that he uses it's a tool that he uses to make you miserable and destroy your lives as, a, as Christians. What he does, it begins with a thought, and then we create an emotion. It becomes so strong sometimes that we, have, we make foolish mistakes, we have foolish action, and, and what it does, it prevents us from doing good for what the Lord has created us for. Well, Satan begins to attack people's lives, and he manipulates the things, and he does it. Fear is the opposite of faith. God wants us to walk by faith, and sometimes even by not even being able to see. Remember the old slogan, walk by faith and not by sight. And what happens, we get up every single morning trusting the Lord with what He is doing in our lives. Now, Satan wants you to walk by fear. So I want to say this to you. The key here is, is the enemy, the devil, instills fear by challenging the promises of God. This is how the devil's worked since the beginning of, the, of Genesis. He takes the promises of God. And God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And then he challenges that with fear. And people buy into it. One of the examples I want to give you is from the New Testament. is found in Matthew 14, 30. Jesus invites Peter to get out of the boat and walk on water. Now, I know all the rationale, I know all the gravity concepts of how what goes up must come down. But what happens, is you need to remember the story is that Peter sees Jesus walking on the water and he begins to want to do the same thing. While the rest of them in the boat have a fear that he would drown, Peter is focused on Jesus Christ. And Jesus says, come on. And what he did, he began to walk on the water. And the next thing you know is he took his eyes and the focus off of Jesus and began to drown. You remember he says in those words, Lord, save me. So I want to say to you today, maybe you're living a life of fear. If you want to walk on water, you've got to get out of the boat. Let me give you another example. It's one of my favorites found in Joshua 1.5. And it says these words, Joshua, no one will be able to defeat you as long as you live. I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will always be with you, and I will never abandon. This promise that he's given here is the same promise for you and I. 
God tells Joshua to be brave and strong and don't be afraid. If you read the book of Joshua, you'll discover that these statements are made more than any other place in Scripture about one particular character. Joshua had plenty of reasons to be afraid. Now think about it. For 40 years he has been Moses' right hand. And now Moses has died. The fear of taking over leadership will often scare us to death and make us afraid. The problem that I want to remind you of is that Joshua had millions of people that he was trying to lead to the promised land. And, and why was he leading? Go back in history 40 years earlier, Moses sends people out, quote, the spies, and they come back, and what they do is that we cannot do this. This is an outside influence on what God was trying to do. And the conclusions of that outside influence of them listening to 10 people who did not have faith in God cost them their lives. Over the next 40 years, all of those people passed away. And for those like Joshua and Caleb who said, yes, we can, who had faith in God instead of fearing. And what we learn here is, is that now Moses has died. Joshua has taken the lead role. If you were to read the first several chapters of, of Joshua, you'll discover that when the Lord speaks, he's a man who gets on the move. And as, as wonderful as that is, we had to remember the reason the people were fearful is because they'd been in slavery for 400 years and they did not know how to fight. So J Joshua's major task was in front of him convincing the people that we need to move forward and not stop. So what happens if you listen to outside influences that are contrary to what God is telling you, I can assure you each time you will fail. Joshua did not listen to outside influence. There's many people that were trying to influence Joshua's leadership style. Listen to them. There were many, many people who wanted to go back because they weren't willing to fight. The voice of the world is loud. And every single day, that voice is trying to move us to be fearful. And God is saying, fear not. Sometimes I want to say this to you. When you go against the majority, what will happen is you will feel like you have to stand by yourself. God is, understands that and God will stand with you when you do what is right based on His Word. Joshua trusts God's leadership in his life. When the Lord spoke, he did what he told him to do. He took them. He brought them out of slavery. This is the whole group of people, other Israelis. He brought them out of slavery. He safely brought them through the Red Sea. He provided nourishment in the wilderness, water, whatever they needed, God provided. And that grew their faith. Now, I want to say this to you. The path of following God is never easy. But the fear can cause you to turn your ear to those who are on the same path. Don't listen to those who are doing contrary to God's Word. Let me give you a verse. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All Scripture is inspired by God. It's useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in your lives. It corrects us when we're wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip His people to do good work. First Peter would say in 3.15, the end of it says, Be ready to tell how God has blessed you. And so today I want to say to you, don't listen to outside influences. Fear not. Be faithful. Trust God even when you can't see what to do. And I want to encourage you as we're working through this week of fear that you would replace fear with faith. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we come right now, and we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. We want to pray for this coronavirus situation. Lord, today, the numbers that we have over 4.4 million people in the world that are infected, we ask you, Lord, to be with them. In the United States, we have 1.4 million people. Lord, I pray for those 295,000 people who have died from this, that you would be with them worldwide. In the United States, where we've had 83,000 pass away so far. So, Lord, we pray that you would remove. The positive is 
that we have 1.6 million people that have recovered worldwide. And even in the United States, we've had over 300,000 recover. And that's something, Lord, with 10 million people being tested, the numbers are going down. And we thank you, Lord. I pray today that you would be with Tish Bennett and she had surgery yesterday. Lord, I pray for healing for her, for her shoulder. I pray for Linda Melton. Lord, they're going to step up the MRI to Friday, May 15th. And Lord, I pray that you would go and be with her and give her strength. And I pray, Father, that there would be complete healing for her life. Lord, we pray for Miss Ann Grantham this morning, Lord. I pray that you would give her a special blessing today. This chemo, Lord, is tough and it's very making her very sick. And I pray, Father, that you would do a healing in her body. For Rita Evans, we ask you, Lord, to continue to improve her in rehab. And Benny Ribbon is going to have surgery. And for Ryan's family, Ryan Ross, Lord, we ask that you be with his family through this tough time. We pray for my friend David and Keith and John, Lord, that you would raise them, David up and let him walk again. So, Lord, while we wait, we pray, Lord. We pray for Sunday morning service, Lord, that people will be drawn here and that we will do our very best. God, take us outside the box. Help us to quit trying to say, I don't want to do this, but, Lord, be willing to try something to reach people for Jesus. So, Lord, I pray that you give us a great day. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to challenge you to have a great day. Go out and learn to live by faith and not by fear. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.